Good morning. Coming up on today's show, we are talking about loving your heart. Dr. Mark is here to answer questions, plus the best ways to lose the weight. And the truth about eggs for breakfast. How about that? Can you eat them? If you have heart issues, we'll find out from the man who knows. New Day Cleveland starts right now. Welcome to a very special edition of New Day Cleveland. Love your heart. We hope this is an inspiring show for you. So we are bringing you life-saving information with our team of world-renowned doctors from mm -hmm. the Cleveland Clinic's cardiac care team. And of course, we'll start with our own Dr. Mark. Dr. Mark is here all about finding out what people know about heart disease, what they should know. And uh, this is one of those things where you get to take some of those delusionary things out of the, out of the uh, process and find out what's really going on. I think the coolest thing about heart health is that you are the solution. Each one of us wow. is the solution. A lot of people say, well, you know what? It's in my genes. It's not in your genes. 90% of heart health is controlled by what you do. Not by your genes, not by who your parents were, not by your family history. Those things count, but what counts 90% is what do I eat? What do I drink? Do I exercise? Did I decide to smoke or did I give up smoking? All of these kinds of decisions make the difference between how you feel and how you do, how long you live. I didn't realize how high of a percentage it is. Yeah, it's 90%. I, do, I think we all, as humans, we've, we want to blame other issues. We say, oh, well, yeah. that's just, you know, it runs in my family. Or that's just something that because of the way I'm, I am, I'm built, I, I just have to accept it or deal with it. Yeah, and it, it's easy to blame something else, someone else. Blame your parents, I got it from them. Not the case, think of it as different. It's easy to escape heart disease because heart disease is the biggest threat to all of us. It is the number one threat to survival, to how long you're gonna live in the Western world, and it's actually starting to spread to other parts of the world as they start doing what we've been doing in the US, um, but it's controllable. So the easy way out is to decide what am I gonna do for my heart? This is a great time to decide. Actually, this is a great hour mm -hmm. to decide what to do for your heart. So can all things be turned around? Like a lot of people like are 60, 70, they used to smoke a lot in those days. Mm -hmm. Then they quit smoking, but that could still have an effect on their heart today, right? It can, but not so much. The moment you quit smoking, your vessels begin to remodel and to get healthier. So smoking, of course, carries with it the risk of lung cancer and other things, but your heart can recover. Mm -hmm. Your heart so, can get better. So these people vaping out there now, the new way without cigarettes, they're hurting their, their health. Almost for sure, vaping is bad for you. Almost for sure. We don't have the decades of data on vaping, but I mean, look, it's nicotine. Who knows what are the effects of all the hundreds of other chemicals in there? Guaranteed, it's not gonna be good for you. You did a survey, basically. Of, 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 are they of people who have been patients of yours or just in general? Uh, a survey oh, general. of people. Yes. Uh, and really showing some statistics and staggering statistics. Um, and we have that full screen to show you some of them, too. Um, be, because there are a lot of figures when you see out there where people are, are like, I'll throw out one here, making, the making excuses. 53% of people blame their metabolism. Again, looking for the easy way out. I mean, the amazing thing to me is I was watching my 16-year-old. It's an excuse. Yeah, so I'm watching my 16-year-old study for her driving test. And she studied harder to get a driver's license than most people study to make themselves live longer. Wow. Um, See, so, that's scary no, when you think about it. What's important to us? This should be yeah. important to us. It's not your metabolism. It's not. Almost never is it your metabolism. It's the choices we make. Look at these. I mean, so this is basically us wanting to lose weight, trying to lose weight. What are we doing? So we do it every January, we, uh, yeah. right? And then we throw it away yeah. by by April, right? right? So diet pills. That 17% of people are saying that they use a dieting pill. They don't work well. Diet pills. What works best is to first have the conviction: I am going to lose weight. Set a goal that is reasonable. Don't say I'm looking to turn out like an Olympic athlete. Set a goal that's reasonable, and then begin with your diet and exercise. I like the one, wear a device. What does that mean like? 
that Car means you uh, carry get a wheelbarrow like, with you. <laughs> uh, Fitbit, Apple Watch, something like that. Yeah. Do you believe? I mean, do you feel that those are helpful? Making in, people so accountable? Far, so far in studies, they're not helpful. Really? Um, meaning if people are randomized to half of you guys are going to get a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a Garmin and half won't, and let's see how the health winds up. So far, no benefit. But it's a great hope that with more information, meaning you can get a device that tells you your heart rate, your blood pressure, how many calories burn, how many steps, all these things in one. The great hope is if people have that information, they will use it to their health advantage. So far, not happening much. But I wouldn't rule it out. You know, we see weight. Weight is a big factor here. You can lose weight a couple ways, right? You can do it with your meals, a meal plan, or you can do it with exercise. Is one better than the other? Is it the combination of both necessary? How combination of both is necessary and way better. Because really, the simplest equation is calories in, calories out. Turns out it's a little more complicated than that. As we lose weight, our body makes it harder to continue to lose because our body wants to hang on to calories. Save itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, 100,000 years ago, could have been a famine yeah. that's causing you to lose weight, so your body lowers your metabolic rate, but you can overcome that. Yeah. Do it gradually. Well, so we're just getting started here, and Dr. Mark is going to be with us all hour long, so we appreciate you being here and spending the hour with us. We're going to turn those hearts around, but before we get to more of Dr. Mark, a lot of us want to know that you know the weight and the heart health are connected in some way, but there's a lot more to it than just that. So we talked to the head cardiovascular at medicine at the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Stephen Nissen, and here is what he had to say. Obesity over the last 20 years has become a true public health crisis in America. About a third of us are now obese. We're actually heading for, in a few years, perhaps 50% of the adult population. And the other worrisome thing is we're now extending down into, into young people, adolescents, and even children who are developing obesity. There's a whole constellation of abnormalities that overweight and obesity lead to. Number one on our list is diabetes. Uh, it is driving a diabetes epidemic like nothing we could ever have imagined uh, 20 years ago. It raises blood pressure, so hypertension is a very, very big issue. It can cause atrial fibrillation, which is a heart rhythm disorder, also very, very important. It raises a blood cholesterol uh, substance known as triglycerides. And we are increasingly realizing that high levels of triglycerides are associated with a increase in, in, in coronary heart disease. Beyond the heart, there are many other things. Our orthopedic surgeons are now replacing knees and hips and, and so on. You can imagine carrying 50 or an extra 100 pounds around every day is a wear and tear on the joints is enormous. Cancer uh, is very strongly linked. Uh, to being obese and uh, some forms of cancer, particularly colon cancer, uh, these are disorders that you see more frequently in people that are overweight. Uh, we think there are some of the reasons why is that when you become overweight and you accumulate fat, particularly in the abdomen, you have increased levels of inflammation in the body. We can measure that by something known as C-reactive protein. And we see that people that are obese have high levels of those, of those inflammatory markers and inflammation both drives heart disease and it drives cancer. We have all these drugs we've developed over the years, but there's no drug that's more effective than something you can do for yourself, which is to exercise. If you look at all of the things that happen, coronary heart disease and uh, diabetes and the really critical disorders that we treat, exercise makes them better and it makes them better to an extent that is superior to what we can achieve with any of our drugs. Losing as little as 5% of body weight can have a pretty big effect. If imagine that you're 200 pounds, well, you know, 5% is only about 10 pounds. Blood pressure goes down, inflammation goes down, triglycerides go down, uh, and it also suggests what I think is a more effective strategy than some. Set a modest goal. You know, I'm 250, I'm going to get down to 240 and do it. And when you get there, you know, then try to sustain that. And then what often happens is a pe that success breeds success. And so you lose that first 10 pounds and you say, I can do this. Let me try for another 10. 
And I've had patients that over a year will ratchet down. What doesn't work is the attempt at a quick fix. Well, there you have it. And a lot of health issues there, obviously caused by being overweight. 87% of Americans did not know there was a connection between obesity and cancer. So good information to know there. Okay, so we want to know a lot more. So we know you have a whole bunch of good questions. We have some good news for your questions, and Dr. Mark will have the answers. Just send your heart-related questions to newday at fox8.com or reach out to us on Facebook. We'll answer some of the questions later in the show, and I know you want to know. Still to come on New Day Cleveland, do you like your eggs? Eggs and bacon for breakfast? I don't know, is it good, is it not? Have things changed? We'll find out. We're cooking with Dr. Mark. Hey Cleveland, we're gonna call this show Cooking with the Cardiologist. It's Dr. Mark for sure, and now it used to be you were worried about cholesterol, it was about eggs, bacon, and all that kind of stuff, and things have changed a little bit, I understand. Yeah, still have to be concerned about cholesterol, meaning you need to know your own cholesterol, but you don't have to be so concerned about the cholesterol that you eat. Why is that? Because most of the cholesterol in your blood does not come from what you eat. It's not coming from that egg that you're seeing in the pan. Most of the cholesterol that's actually in your blood is manufactured by your liver, 80 to 85%. Oh. So what you eat is less important than what your liver decides to do. So I'm putting a little bit of a crema tartar in the eggs here to make them a little fluffier and lighter. Yeah, I think that's all right. I don't think it'll hurt anything, right? It will not. And I get, we've had the question, if eggs are now okay, which they are, what's better? Or is it better if you have them scrambled or an omelet or if you have them sunny side up or fried? And the answer is it's all the same stuff. Doesn't matter much at all. But the main point is it's all right to have eggs. They're, they're actually relatively low in calorie, high in protein, have good fats. So it's actually a very complete good food. So it's not a bad thing. It is not. So what about if I come, I come out here and I get hot sauce? Can I put hot sauce on them? Um, yeah, if you like hot sauce. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to pass on the hot sauce. Okay. That stuff is really hot. <laughs> it actually, by the way, increases your basal metabolic rate. So you, you, go. you have something with hot sauce in it, and you burn uh, just a tiny bit more calories than if you don't have the spices. So there you go. It does not replace exercise. Hot sauce, not the same as exercise. Okay, now I've got something else I want to show you here. I've got, I had some bacon I made a little bit earlier in the oven to get some of the fat off of it. And I, I, I might be reaching a bit to get you to, tr to do this, huh? To yeah, I'm not gonna try it. This is the bacon, the bacon doesn't work for you, huh? No, I, I actually don't love bacon anyway. But uh, the question is, is that piece of bacon you're struggling with gonna kill you? And the answer is, it will not. And you can have bacon periodically. Um, but I would say you could have eggs three, four days a week. Bacon, maybe just once or twice a week. Okay, so there's the bacon. See, the, this side of the bacon is pretty shiny. That might yeah. be the part that's not good for you, huh? It's very rich in saturated fats, um, just not a lean meat, not the best meat for you. But again, not going to be the big difference maker. And is my heart healthy? Because I had a piece of bacon. Is that going to do it? But I this remember, is good. I remember when I walked, you were in the show one day and somebody made something with bacon up here and you walked by and you, you took a couple, like, it, it's pretty tempting though, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, this smell, I mean, all the viewers can't imagine the smell. We have that smell memory. We know exactly when bacon's cooking in the house and it, it tastes good and it's not gonna hurt you. The eggs though, without the bacon, without the sausage, particularly without processed meats. Processed uh -huh. meats, not so good. Eggs the way you're making them, A-okay. It's okay? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna take some eggs here. We'll bring these eggs out that are finished. We'll put them here. You cook very fast. So there we got some eggs. We're not gonna put the bacon on there, but I got something else I was gonna ask you about. What about this with your eggs? Excellent. Some berries here? Yeah. So we all need some carbs. The best carbs are going to come from fresh fruit. I was struggling with the berries, too. Do you notice that? I think you're doing a really good job. Thank you very much. I'm going to take you into the operating room later. You're going to do some heart surgery with me. Oh, I love it. Okay, I got another thing I want to show you, too. How about something like this? And that is where I come in. <laughs> you come from yes. the on. <laughs> now, is that okay? It would be better if this were a whole wheat, whole grain croissant. So of everything on this plate, this gets the lowest ranking. That kind of white bread, processed, high carb, high glycemic index. Turn that into a whole wheat croissant 
and I'm gay. And you're okay. Yeah. I thought that's very interesting to note that the majority of what we're eating has nothing to do with our cholesterol. I, I think that's going to please a lot of people, but it doesn't give them a pass. No, it to still just affects go, your weight. It still affects your weight. So yeah. just because it's not necessarily affecting your heart, the weight's still an issue. Yeah, um, because you, you could eat so much good food that your weight goes up and then you're in trouble a different way. What's another food that used to be a dangerous food, but now it's supposed to be good? <laughs> um, dairy has gotten a bad name and saturated fat in red meat. You can have some dairy, you can have some red meat. It's not going to be a big deal. But processed meats are the worst. So. Lay off those. <laughs> but listen, you're allowed to have this twice a week, he said. And when it tastes yeah. this good, and there's a you horror show. Can refuse. That's a horror show right there. We got the bacon, we got the croissant, a little bit uh, of fruit. Not a horror show. I mean, this is not going to be the end of you, but you don't want this every day. This is not seven days a week. <clears throat> Once a month, maybe? Uh, yeah, that'd be all right. But go whole wheat. Okay. Get rid of the croissant. Oh, yeah. All right, hey, if we're lugging a few extra pounds around with us, after the break, fun. here's what yeah. you need to know. We're talking about the key to successful weight loss. It does include a lot of this, unfortunately. Yeah. Just, just one more bite. Yeah. And look at the size of that croissant. It's bigger than my hand. <laughs> Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. Cleveland loves your heart show. That is what we're all about right now. And more than 7% of the people know what don't know what their body mass index is, or BMI is what it's called. Well, the moment of truth has arrived. Dr. Mark is here. He's going to show us how easy it is to figure out. I still don't believe it's easy to figure out. Uh, it is easy to figure out. Here's what you need. You need a scale, and you need to know how tall you are. And then you need a smartphone or computer. Ah. So if you have your height and your weight, can be in kilograms, pounds, centimeters, inches, doesn't matter. If you've got your height and your weight, and you've got a computer, search on the computer, BMI calculator, BMI stands for body mass index. Put in the numbers and you get your own number back. So you plug in your height, yep. your weight, and what's mm -hmm. the other number? That's it. That's it. And, and this, here's, here's the chart right here. And when a number comes back, what's that number supposed to be? Between something or above something, or below something? Yeah, a normal BMI would be 18 and a half to 24.9. So just say something like 18 to 25. That means you're in a good situation. More than 25, 25 to 30, we classify as overweight. More than 30, as obese. As obese. So what do you think? You, you walk around a lot. You look, at, you look at the average population. What do you think their BMI is as you walk around and check out people? Oh, my gosh. I was at the airport the uh, day before yesterday walking to my plane. It looked like I didn't see too many people under 25. You saw a bunch of 30s. I saw a lot of 30s, a uh, few 33, 34s. Um, we have an increasing BMI. If the stock market went the way BMI in America is going, <laughs> we would all be happier. See, when I was young, we were looking for 10s. Now we're looking for 18 to 25s, yeah. right? That's yeah, the rating scale has changed. <laughs> it's totally and changed. It, and this rating scale has lifelong implications. Yeah. If your BMI is good, 18 and a half to 24.9, you're going to have a lower risk of heart disease, cancer, joint problems, gallbladder, everything. It complicates everything in your body. Yeah. It, is just bad. It's more than simply your legs carrying around the extra weight. It's your whole body getting into trouble. Okay, so this is one of those things. So we, we walked over here to the scale, and I, I just have to tell you, Dr. Mark looked down at the scale, and he says, that is my enemy. <laughs> he saw the scale down there. So a lot of people feel like that about, about the yeah. scale, because you get a scale at home that says one thing, you go somewhere else that says something else. You take it rather personally, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, but the numbers are really important. And if I get on that scale and I don't like the number, all right, I don't like it, but I can do something about right. it. Right, you don't get depressed, you do something about yeah. it. So there it is, folks. That's what you're looking for. Now you know what BMI is. Just look it up on your computer or on your telephone, plug in the numbers, and you know which direction you have to go, and it's usually down. <laughs> in general, yes. In general, yes. Natalie? You know, sometimes I think when you see that number on the scale, it can be a motivator for you, but it's hard. A lot of people have tried to drop a few pounds. It's not always that easy to do, but... The good thing is it's not impossible. So here with the best ways to get started and stay motivated is Dr. Sapna Legha. It is good to have you here. Thank you for that. Cardiologist, so she knows what she's talking about. I do think that the number one thing when people are trying to lose weight is th that's hard for them is just that initial getting over the hump. Sure. Getting started and pushing yourself mm -hmm. in the beginning. Right, right, right. So I think the best strategy for weight loss is a stepwise approach and there's just basically very five very simple steps for that. I would say number one would be to know where you're at. So know your BMI uh, and set up some realistic goals. 
talk to your physician about a plan that works best for you. And initially, I would say aim for like maybe just about three to five percent of loss of weight of your initial body weight. And uh, then, you know, so studies have shown that steady weight loss is actually better than rapid weight loss mm -hmm. because if you rapidly lose weight, sometimes you just gain back all right that back. right back, right? So number two would be uh, know how much you're eating and why you're eating. So a food diary or a food app can help you track how many calories you're really ingesting. And it also helps to identify triggers. We're all humans, you know, we have emotions and which leads to binge eating or emotional eating, which can help you tackle that. I feel like emotional, not to interrupt you, but emotional eating is, is something that affects so many people and you're not realizing how Absolutely. much your emotions yes. affect your body weight. Absolutely, and that will kind of help you track that and help you avoid those triggers as well. Number three would be the diet. So research has shown that Mediterranean diet is the most beneficial for heart health. This is a diet which is particularly rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes. It limits your dairy and refined sugars and processed foods. So this is a sort of diet that you want to adopt for better heart health. And it also reduces your chances of developing high blood pressure, diabetes, which are risk factors for heart disease at the end of the day. Number four, I would say watch your portion size. You know, watch, be mindful. Of that is my, I think, maybe it's not just me. I think right. maybe a lot of people have a problem with yes. and portion size. Absolutely, yes. But that it kind of just helps you track that as well. And last but not the least, I strongly encourage my patients to adopt a regular exercise routine. What I typically say is that about 30 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise, at least five times a week, more importantly, I think one should pick something they enjoy doing, which could be just brisk walking. And it, initially, you can do it at smaller intervals and then gradually build it up. But do something you like, because then the chances of you sticking to it and incorporating it into your sure. lifestyle are way more, leading to greater chance of success at weight loss. And I think that once people initially see changes in their health, whether it be weight loss or whether it be when they go to the doctor, numbers are changing. Yes. Once you get, it's like a high, on, once you get right. that, you want to keep going. Absolutely. And you feel good about yourself. You know, you're working out, you're watching what you eat, and as you see the results, but that's what I said, set realistic goals. You know, if you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to just go, you know, bang at it, that, that probably doesn't happen, and then people get discouraged. So just a stepwise, gradual approach, and talk to your physician, come up mm -hmm. with a realistic plan, which is going to help you. Well, I, you brought up the food diary, and I do think that is important for someone when if you're really being true to yourself and you're tracking things yeah. you're not relying on somebody else to keep you accountable but you when you write yes. that down something yeah. that you had that you right. know you shouldn't be exactly. having exactly you, you kind of feel guilty you kind then. Of feel guilty and it helps you see oh well maybe I'm not gonna do that tomorrow you know so it kind of helps helps you regularize what you're eating uh, now when it comes to I'm losing weight yes. and, and I know we're looking at a lot of people who are dealing with this and now the correlation between the two I, I know that working out is obviously very good for your heart but when you're also losing the pounds mm -hmm. and you're seeing that combination of both happening at the same time and you said 30 minutes yes. that's for hearts or is that for you can also shed the pounds with that well it's for general health as well so but definitely beneficial for cardiac health but what it also does is it kind of uh, you know changes your body shape your size so cardiac health is more more related to your abdominal obesity. So when you're shedding pounds, especially around the central abdomen, that is particularly beneficial for eliminating things like high blood pressure and diabetes. So usually, you know, waist circumference is an important thing we look at. So shedding those pounds in a, a long, you know, combination of diet and exercise is, is definitely beneficial. So that's why they always yeah. measure your yeah, waist a lot. We got a, that's yes, extremely yes. helpful. So 35 inches for women, above 35 for women, above 40 for men has been shown to be associated with risk factors for heart disease. Keep that in mind. Get one of those little measuring yeah. tapes, very easy. Very handy. You can track yourself yeah. that way too. Thank you so much for being it was here. It a pleasure, pleasure being having you. All right, still coming up, we are going Mediterranean, as she just mentioned. And we're in the kitchen and we're preparing a health, a healthy, healthy dish, a heart healthy dish. You got it. When New Day Cleveland returns. Heart healthy. Welcome back to our special Love Your Heart New Day Cleveland. We've dedicated our entire hour to getting your heart healthier. And of course, it starts with weight loss and exercise. Here's Dr. Mark with a whole lot more. Americans know weight and heart health are connected. According to a Cleveland Clinic survey, 88% know weight management is important, but many feel it's unattainable. 
Dr. Eric Van Eiderson is the Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation at the Cleveland Clinic. I think it's important for uh, all individuals to not feel despair and to uh, believe that they can achieve weight loss, but it is going to take a little bit of work and it's meant to be progressive. That's the safest way to achieve weight loss is, is not trying to see immediate results. That's something that is, is not healthy, but also is not maintainable. Individuals can begin to see the benefits of weight loss almost immediately with a modest amount of even 5% initially. It's something that I think sets a good benchmark to build off of and helps individuals uh, see that they have accomplished something and keep the momentum going. Other benefits of exercise include increased energy, better blood pressure and cholesterol numbers, and improved quality of life. I think the best approach is to set realistic goals and uh, make that connection in terms of how much work you're willing to put into the weight management program so that you set yourself up to be successful as opposed to setting unrealistic goals too fast. We don't want individuals to feel discouraged and, and hopeless in, in the sense of not attaining the, the eventual end goal that is uh, a permanent uh, weight management plan that is more of an intrinsic aspect of someone's life. Exercise or diet is one more important when it comes to heart health. No, one is not more important than the other. Is that the only way weight management works is a successful combination of both, but that message isn't necessarily meant to be you have to be perfect at each. It means you do have to strive to be consistent with both diet and exercise because all the modern evidence would demonstrate that uh, the best weight management programs incorporate a, a dose response benefit of regular participation in physical activity and proper dietary habits, including proper portion control. 42% believe that even if they're overweight, as long as they exercise, their heart is healthy. Unfortunately, it's, it's not true, is, is that again, it is a multidisciplinary plan, that is weight management, and that yes, you'll, you'll see a benefit from exercising, but certainly to optimize the, the weight management and overall cardiovascular health aspect, you certainly do want to incorporate diet and exercise and portion control together on a consistent basis. And uh, realistically, you have to believe that uh, there isn't a, a day off from cardiac prevention and weight management. The latest exercise recommendations are 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise each week. Well, exercising is not a one size fits all. Isn't that right, Dr. Mark? It is not, but it is for all. Everyone should do it. Even in heels? Um, you're pushing it a little bit. But Listen, can I just say this? The worst has happened to me running on a treadmill in sneakers. I went flying off of the back of it. So I feel like I've already had the worst happen. Why not try it in heels but now? Obviously, you've not concluded exercise is dangerous because it's not. Correct. Exercise is good for you. It's great for you. So, And I feel like when you're when you're talking about treadmills, and thanks to uh, Planet Fitness for bringing this in, by the way, but when you're talking about treadmills, and this is more of like a, a moderate. Maybe not everyone wants to jump on a treadmill really quick, but there's a lot of people who this is very beneficial for. Yeah, the equipment needed for exercise, mm -hmm. pretty simple. I noticed you've got shoes and feet. <laughs> These are not the ideal exercise shoes. No. But that's really all you need. If you've got <laughs> shoes and feet, you can exercise. You can have a really beautiful treadmill like this treadmill from Planet Fitness, or you can have the sidewalk outside your house. You're gonna get the same benefit either way. Now, when, it's, when you were talking, I know you always mentioned 30 minutes. Um, Staying on a treadmill for 30 minutes would definitely be key. That would do it, but you can break it up. So let's say you don't have 30 consecutive minutes in your schedule, you're real busy today. All right, fine, take the stairs all day long. Maybe that adds up to 15 minutes. Park a good ways from where you work, another 10 minutes of walking. Throw in five minutes of just window shopping at the mall, there's your 30 minutes. It need not be all at once. Now I know, and why I fell off of a treadmill. I think everyone's trying to push themselves when they, they see a treadmill and they think, I have to keep going, I have to push myself. Do you, I mean, I guess everybody's different, right? but when it comes to speeds you're going for, you don't have to be running at a 10 in order to get a great workout in. You do not, um, but you don't want to be walking, like frankly, this. at this pace. <laughs> uh, go at a pace where you say, you know what, I can still talk, but it's a little bit hard. If you're going at a rate where you say, I'm walking, I'm moving, but it's a little hard to talk, which is generally gonna be about four miles per hour or more, then you're getting some kind of a workout. If you can actually work out to the point where you're sweating, 
that is better, but you get the biggest bang for your buck just by getting on the treadmill or getting on the sidewalk. I think that's a lot of people worry about too. They think, well, my heart rate, maybe it's too high, maybe I'm sweating, but it's okay to be out of breath sometimes as you're oh, working it, out. Yeah, it's preferable yes. to work to that point. Now, if, if you get on the treadmill and you're going two miles per hour and you're out of breath, stop and see a doctor. Okay. Because that should make, make it so you can be all right. That's where I stopped my treadmill experience too, if that's okay with you. Thank right. you, Dr. Mark. Right, welcome. So it doesn't have to be a treadmill that you're using. So we have Judy here, who, and you're gonna teach us some great yoga tips. Yes, yoga tips. Yoga is one of the best reasons we do yoga. It helps with our heart health because it can calm us. It helps us understand ourselves a little bit better because in mindfulness, we can listen to our body, choose, are we stressed, are we hungry, are we tired, mm -hmm. right? And it adds a lot of variety to all the exercise that we do. So we become more flexible, that helps. And in that mindfulness is where we can make better choices too. So I'm gonna show you a, an exercise sure. or two. Love the to idea is we can do this anywhere, anytime, any part of the day. First thing is everybody watch your posture. We want to sit up straight, shoulders back. That helps us breathe. We're, we're using our body for, for core, actually, mm -hmm. so sitting and standing up straight. Here's a nice pose just to relax our spine. We call it cat curl. Lean forward. I like to say we're doing it like we're giving a smooch, right? Mwah, here, <laughs> right? And as we curl, we're moving that spine. So the idea of yoga, we animate it with our breath. Big breath in and out. So one of the things that's really important is noticing how we breathe. So if I put my elbows here and I take a nice big breath in, nice big breath out, oh, it can calm us. Small little bites, it doesn't have to take much. So we move the spine forward. What if we do a little twist to mm -hmm. a nice big breath in, twist around, breathing in. I actually felt a little pop there, it was nice. Big <laughs> breath in, exhale we twist. So yoga, I think people think, well, I'm not sweating with yoga. Well, I shouldn't say that. You can sweat a lot with yoga. We can. But when it comes, to, when you're doing, if you have moderations that you need to make, if you have restrictions, just because you're not breaking this huge sweat, it's still helping your health. And you know, the idea really in, in yoga is not to sweat. Just like any other sport or any other activity, we can hurt ourselves. Choose a teacher that's um, compatible with you. And we do yoga for patients like this that they haven't moved for a while, they feel better, they have more confidence, uh, their depression level raises up, their anxiety mm -hmm. calms down. So you're right, you're absolutely right. We don't have to sweat. Another, you, you want to try this, Catra? I wish I'm going to try it later with you because I have to go okay. try kicking that. Bags butt over here right now. That's what I have to do because we're showing again. There's all different levels. Katie here, she's a fitness instructor and she means business. Let me tell you. So this is if you want to take it up a notch and um, you you really want to feel that physical fitness and feel the burn. Kickboxing is a great way to do it. Kickboxing, boxing, yeah, and with Title Boxing Club. Um, and we have all sorts of classes. So you have kickboxing, boxing, um, we have some strength classes. So this is something that's for everybody. So you can truly do this if you're young if you're old, anywhere in between, and it's all fitness levels, and you have your own heavy bag, mm -hmm. so everybody has their own individual bag that they get to hit, so it's a group setting workout, but it's their own personal workout. So, you know, if it's, it's a day that you feel like you're moving a little slower, you don't have to necessarily hit the bag as hard, but you have the ability to control that and really hit that bag hard. And I think it is one of the greatest forms of stress relief out there. In my no opinion. question about that. I mean, if you're having no a question. bad day and yeah. you just want to take it out on something, it, it's right here. <laughs> it, it's right here for you. You throw some jab crosses, and you're not going to get in trouble. Yeah. And talk about cardio. When it comes to, I love boxing classes. When it comes to cardio, I mean, I know some people like running a lot. Yeah. I would prefer doing this. There's truly nothing. I've been working in boxing, and I've worked in fitness for many years in mm -hmm. many different entities, but in boxing, there's nothing that is more all body, full body workout than boxing. It's strength, it's cardio, it's core, all wrapped up in an hour. So you're really hitting everything. Um, on your body, and you have the chance to bring your heart rate up. You give a little, you give a little active recovery, mm -hmm. so you re recover your heart rate, and then you take it back out. So again. you're working intervals. Yep. You feel like a million bucks when you're done with one of those classes. Do you want gloves? I, I, box, box, I, I would, put them on. Listen, these, <laughs> they're going to have me doctor, between the heels, and I, I'm going to be good to go after this thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. I really Thanks. appreciate it. Try that out. Title boxing is a lot of fun too. Love them. All right, lots of food. Lots of great information, lots of working out, all of this additional uh, information for you, the heart-related questions you might have in regards to any of that, you can send them in to us, newday at fox8.com. You can also reach out to us on Facebook because Dr. Mark is going to be answering some of your questions a little later on in the show, and you do not want to miss those.
We will be back, and after this, heart healthy and delicious. It is a meal that is sure to become one of your favorites when we return. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland's Love Your Heart Show. And you know, it turns out we are what we eat, so which diet is the healthiest? Well, we're here and it's the Mediterranean diet, and here to whip up something delicious is Cleveland Clinic dietitian, Lindsay Malone, along with Dr. Mark. And uh, Dr. Mark's gonna give you marks on, on your, uh, your diet suggestion All here. All right, I'll do my best here. So we are making some salmon with spinach and using just very simple ingredients, it's gonna come together really quickly. So we take wild salmon and you wanna choose wild because it's higher in omega-3 fats, anti-inflammatory, um, good for the heart. And, um, and start with that, so just put it on a sheet pan, get your oven preheated to about 500 degrees. Mm -hmm. It's gonna cook really quickly. Gonna cook fast. I see you have it on parchment paper so it won't stick too. Yeah, so you can do this a couple different ways, but parchment paper is really nice because you don't have to use any extra oil um, to prevent it from sticking and it slides right off the paper. So less oil is better. Yeah, so in this case you get a lot of healthy fat from the salmon already. We're going to put a little olive oil on top here, just drizzle. Now you're, you're raising an interesting point. You are putting something that's heavy in fat into a healthy meal, yeah. telling us and everyone in the audience it's okay to have fat. It's, it's more than okay, this is good fat. Yeah, exactly. So really the conversation is about the type of fat and not necessarily how much. So uh, good uh, omega-3s from the fish and then you have the unsaturated fats in the in the olive oil. It's a great start. It's going to keep you full and satisfied mm -hmm. and also very anti-inflammatory. So then we're going to add some uh, just classic seafood seasoning here. And what you want to look for in your seasoning is something that's just herbs and spices, no sugar and um, just put it right on there. We're gonna pop it right in the oven. Are you worried about salt when you use those kind of things? So it depends. If you have an issue with high blood pressure, then you wanna be mindful of salt. You don't necessarily have to avoid it like the plague, but you just wanna be mindful of, of what's, you know, where you're getting it from. Um, but again, just a classic seafood seasoning. It's a nice, mm -hmm. easy, simple way mm -hmm. to go. Then we're gonna take a hot pan here. We're gonna add a little bit more olive oil. Let's see how. Olive oil is so useful. You can do so many different things with it. Yeah, and depending on the, you know, what kind of flavor you're looking for, you can go, um, the extra virgin olive oil is gonna be the most mild in flavor, and mm -hmm. you're also gonna be able to cook it at a higher temperature than some of the other types of olive oil. I'm gonna back the heat so, up just a little yep. bit. I so if it's smoking, it's a little bit too hot for you. We're and what is this, down. garlic you're putting in? Yeah, so we are putting in about a clove. Yeah, over here just fine. A clove of garlic here. And we'll do this. So what we're looking for here is to flavor the oil. So as you add your other ingredients, you're really gonna infuse that flavor. What else you wanna so put in there? let's throw the beans in there next. Okay. Okay, there we go. That'll cool it down. Yeah. Yep. All right, and then from there, we're gonna put the spinach in. I'm back with the spinach. And the spinach is gonna wilt really quickly here. So you put it on. How much you want in there? And you could almost put almost the whole bag. That's a good, it's gonna shrink down. All right, that's like, good. Like you want your waistline to, Perfect. right? Perfect, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have an, a lot of nice spinach here and there we go. We're back in business. All right, a little trick here. Popeye if, would be proud. If you yeah. want to speed it up, you just put the lid on here and it's gonna wilt nice and quickly. Actually, I think I found the Mediterranean plate for us. How about that? What do you think? It's got the right colors. Yeah. All right, so this is going to wilt with spinach and, and really any leafy greens. You're getting vitamin A, you're getting vitamin K, you're getting some fiber, which will keep you nice and full. And it's so easy. I mean, you can get the prepackaged greens from the grocery store that are already washed. And actually, a common misconception, you don't want to rewash those greens. A lot of people oh, do. Oh, really? Yeah. But the USDA did a study that found more people contaminate the greens when they rewash them. That's the most interesting thing I've heard today. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. crazy? <laughs> I didn't know yeah. that. So, so if it just says, take it right out of the bag, says it's good to go. washed you know, don't, uh, it seems like human error, you know, plays a role there. Yeah. Ding, ding, wash ding, it that again. is great information. You know what else is great? Look how nice your salmon came out. So 500 degrees, how long did it cook? All right, so it takes about five to six minutes. You want it to flake nicely with a fork. Uh -huh. And you can also do it under the broiler or on the grill if right. you're looking for another way, to, another way to cook it. This looks great. I'm gonna put it under here. All right, so let's... What do you want to do with the lemon? Here, so the lemon, you just want to squeeze right on top of 
Uh, the right fish. The there we go. I'm going to let the world-renowned surgeon do the lemon squeezing around here. Uh, so I squirt you in the eye, not me. No, you could. <laughs> Whatever you like. All right. Here, I'll get that for you. All right. I'll give you a little toss here too. There we go. You just sort of turn this around a little bit. You know what? John Yusko, who usually cleans the range for us, he's not here today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when he comes back Monday, he's going to go, what happened to our place? You can tell him I did it. Okay. So All right. We're going to put a little bit of this on here, get some beans for you. That looks and like a very filling meal. So this is the part of, this is the Mediterranean diet idea, right? And if you want to make this keto, what would you do? So this can be keto and Mediterranean diet friendly if you take out the beans. So that would make it a low carb dish higher in fat, moderate in protein, and again, it could be good for people in the same household following different different diets. Nice job. Thank yeah, you. very good. Thanks. Colorful and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, folks, here it comes. This is your last chance. That's right, your last chance to send in your questions for Dr. Mark. He'll answer as many as he can when we return. Sponsors of New Day Cleveland include Welcome back. So it would not be a Dr. Mark show without your heart questions. So we're going to get right to these. Uh, Bill Wright wrote in, what is a heart murmur and are there treatments? A heart murmur is the sound your heart makes when a valve, one of the heart valves is not working correctly, when either the valve leaks or is narrowed. Think of it this way. Imagine a smoothly flowing stream, mm -hmm. kind of quiet. Water is flowing, but not much noise. Now imagine white water. It's turbulent and it makes a lot of noise. White water is loud. When you have a murmur, a heart valve isn't working right and the blood flow is turbulent and makes noise, which we pick up with a stethoscope. If someone has a heart murmur that someone notices with a stethoscope, the next step is get an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart and it's non-invasive, doesn't hurt, takes a few minutes, and we can figure out what is going on with your heart valves. Talk about this misnomer, a murmur sounds quiet. This sounds like a rushing stream. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. And I bet we could speed up that rushing stream with a little caffeine, like coffee, caffeine, tea, all that kind of thing. Is caffeine good, bad, what does it do? Caffeine is our most popular stimulant, whether it is in coffee, tea, diet sodas. I said diet because they're better than full calorie. Uh, caffeine increases your heart rate, can increase your blood pressure in general. Here's the bottom line. People who have a cup or two of coffee each day or tea on average live longer than people who don't. It's not a strong enough effect that I'm gonna write you a prescription sure. for coffee or tea, but coffee, tea, caffeine in modest doses are not bad for you. They actually help us get through the day. They improve intellectual and athletic performance Whoa. as well. Should like somebody, who should stay away from caffeine? People should stay away from caffeine if they find it triggers abnormal heart rhythms in them or makes them feel too jittery. Caffeine has been unfairly maligned and blamed for all kinds of heart problems. It's very rare that caffeine causes a true heart problem. Interesting, so Jennifer, thank you for asking that question. Steve asked, what role should fruit play in losing weight? Are, are there any fruits you should be avoiding? No fruit specifically to avoid, but the best use for fruit in your diet is to replace refined processed carbs. So if you're thinking, big croissant on my plate or an apple. They actually both have carbs, they both have sugar. Choose the apple or choose the pear or choose the orange. Use fruit as a snack, a healthy snack to replace refined processed packaged foods. So what would you say about cake, Dr. Mark? Cake? I would say cake on a birthday is Sounds the good. very best time. Okay, well how uh, about a heart cake? For David's birthday. David's birthday. I, I, I could feel that one coming. You right know there. it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It is not just, it's today, it's on Sunday, yeah. right? Yes. So it's birthday Sunday. We had to get a quick birthday shout How out about in. about that? Happy birthday. That's from Rito's Bakery. Thank you. They Thank made you that especially Rito. for you. Thank you very much, everyone. So this is a heart healthy cake, I, I, I'm hoping, right? Yes. On your birthday, you're allowed. You're allowed yeah. to cheat. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Best birthday present I ever got was from the Cleveland Clinic when they helped me. I had a little cardiovascular yes. problem and uh, they hooked me up, so I got a backup heart now. Absolutely. They, say, they say you can't have your cake and eat it, but. <laughs> but you can. Today we can. Today, Today we can. Dr. Can. Mark, thank you so much for being here. You always give wonderful information. You're helping. I hope that this motivates you to get out, really start thinking about your heart, exercising and eating healthy. And Plus baby cake. steps, right? You don't have to do, make all no. the changes at one big, big, big oh, time. better to do it incrementally. Little steps till you get to the end. Okay, well, little thank steps you, we are Mark. to the end of this show. 
Great to have you on the show. Great to see you. Happy Thank birthday, you, everybody. David. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland, folks.